Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Get Lean Foundation. This episode is very unique because it's divided into two parts. In the first part, we'll look at several articles and studies to learn what exactly is the optimal weight loss rate and macronutrient ratio when it comes to losing fat quickly while maintaining both strength and muscle. We'll also see how these articles and studies compare with my personal fat loss transformation to see if I maybe could have done anything differently. In the second part of this episode, which I'm super excited about, there's a hands-on exercise that we'll do together where you'll follow along as we calculate our daily calorie and macronutrient goals. This means that by the end of the episode, you'll know what the best evidence-based high-level strategy is for losing fat quickly and you'll have your personal daily calorie and macronutrient numbers. So without further ado, let's get started with part one. In 2015, Wolvenin and colleagues published a study where the aim was to investigate the effects of a four week weight reduction period with high protein and reduced carbohydrate intake on things like body composition, explosive power, speed, serum hormone concentrations, and acid-base balance. Essentially, the authors wanted to investigate how quickly athletes can lose weight without losing muscle or affecting their performance. The subjects of the study were 20 to 35-year-old track and field jumpers and sprinters who were already quite lean at about 8 to 10% body fat. The subjects were divided into two groups. Group 1 included 7 subjects who maintain a daily caloric deficit of 300 calories, the low weight reduction group, while group 2 included 8 subjects who maintain a daily caloric deficit of 750 calories, the high weight reduction group. The results of the study were quite interesting. The low weight reduction group had a total body weight reduction of 1 pound, of which half was body fat and the other half was lean body mass. In contrast, the high weight reduction group had a total body weight reduction of 5 pounds, of which 4 pounds was body fat and 1 pound was lean body mass. This means that the high weight reduction group lost more than 4 times as much fat as the low weight reduction group, while, as the authors put it, fat free mass and bone mass remained statistically unaltered in both groups. In regards to athletic performance, there were no differences in counter movement jump or sprinting time between the groups before or after the study. However, counter movement jump and sprinting time actually improved for the high weight reduction group. And lastly, in regards to hormone concentrations, there were no differences between the groups in serum hormone concentrations before and after the study, except in cortisol, which was greater in the high weight reduction group. Now, because the size of the groups in the study was only 7 to 8 people each, the study as a whole cannot be considered to be statistically significant. For example, it's completely possible that the high weight reduction group saw a higher reduction in body fat simply because, on average, that group had more fat to begin with. And according to this 2000 paper by G. Forbes, there is an inverse curvilinear relationship between initial body fat content and the proportion of weight loss consisting of lean tissue, which simply means that individuals with lower body fat are more likely to lose muscle during weight loss. With that being said, I think there are still several important things that we can take away from the study. For example, first, we get an idea of how quickly individuals can lose weight without compromising performance or losing too much lean body mass. The high weight reduction group lost about 1.25 pounds of body weight per week, which in their case is equivalent to about 0.6% of body weight per week. Second, we also have a sample macronutrient ratio that we can use as a guideline for losing fat. The high weight reduction group had a macronutrient breakdown of about 0.9 grams of protein per pound of body weight, 0.3 grams of fat, and 1.4 grams of carbs. If we were to convert this to a chart representing the calorie ratio, we can see that it translates to about 30% of total daily caloric intake coming from protein, 23% from fat, and about 47% from carbohydrates. 
these two takeaways are consistent with much of the current literature that's out regarding fat loss, maintenance of lean body mass during weight loss, and macronutrient ratios. For example, in 2014, Helms and colleagues published a literature review of bodybuilding contest preparation recommendations, and the authors found the optimal weight loss rate to be between 0.5 and 1% of body weight per week, with a recommended macronutrient ratio of about 1 to 1.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight, 15 to 30% calories from fat, and the remaining calories from carbohydrates. Now, if we want to really try to fine-tune our weight loss rate, we can look to a 2011 study published by Garth and colleagues, which examined the effect of weight loss rates on body composition as well as on strength and power-related performance. The authors concluded that athletes who want to gain lean body mass and increase one rep max strength during a weight loss period should aim for a weekly body weight loss of 0.7%. To summarize the main points that we discussed regarding an optimal fat loss rate and macronutrient ratio, here they are once again. Number one, for losing fat quickly without losing a significant amount of muscle or strength, the literature recommends 0.5 to 1% body weight per week. Within that range, I have two different recommendations based on your starting point. If you're considered to be overweight or obese based on your BMI, the recommendation is to aim for the top end of that optimal range, which is 1% body weight per week. During my personal fat loss transformation, I averaged about 1.2% of body weight per week, which is outside of the optimal range. So would it have been better for me to stick with the 1% rate? I probably would have kept more muscle, but with everything considered, I think that what I ended up doing is totally okay because one, it's very difficult to hit your daily and weekly goals 100% perfectly. And two, if I had to pick between accidentally losing more weight or accidentally losing less weight, if I'm overweight, I will always prefer to lose more weight because seeing progress is like the ultimate fuel and motivator. It pushes you to continue making progress, which helps you reach your overall goal. For example, According to this 2005 conceptual review by Elfhag and Rossner, the authors found that having more initial weight loss progress actually leads to better overall maintenance of that weight loss. So just to reiterate, if you're overweight or obese, aim to lose 1% body weight per week. Otherwise, if you're already moderately lean and you're now trying to get to the next level of leanness, then the recommendation is to aim to lose 0.7% of body weight per week as we saw in the previous studies for various athletes. This is because if you're at a relatively low body fat, then it becomes easier to lose muscle during weight loss if you go too fast. So in this scenario, I think it would pay off to go a bit more slowly. Number two, when it comes to macronutrients, for protein, aim to have 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound. What I personally follow is around 0.8 grams of protein if I'm or when I was overweight and if you're already relatively lean for example if you're trying to go from 15 to 10 percent body fat then aim for the higher end of that range say 0.9 grams per pound of body weight when it comes to fat aim for 15 to 30 percent of your daily caloric intake to come from fat what I personally follow is around 25 to 30 percent because I find that going too low on fat leads me to have stronger cravings and consuming more fat actually helps me stay satiated longer. And finally, the remaining calories should be allocated to carbohydrates. All right guys, so here we are in part two of the episode. You can get to this calculator by following the link in the description. I'm going to use my the stats that I had when I started my transformation. So I'll go ahead and begin inputting those here into the calculator. At the time, my age was 24 years old. My weight was about 203 pounds. My height is 5'10". I'll set my activity level to moderately active. I wouldn't go beyond that unless you work out like every single day, uh, which is, is not recommended. And for my target weekly weight loss, in terms of percent of body weight per week, I can see that my BMI classification is overweight, so I'll follow the 1% uh, 
uh, of body weight per week that we learned about from part one of this episode. My target protein intake is 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, which, which matches the, the optimal uh, target protein intake. And I'll personally set my target fat intake in terms of percent of total daily calories to 30%. So now I can go ahead and scroll down and get my final output. I can see that my target weight loss rate is two pounds per week. Uh, my, my optimal daily calorie goal is 1,820 calories, which is made up of about 160 grams of protein, 60 grams of fat, and 156 grams of carbs. This is actually pretty close to what I was following at the time when I started my transformation. Uh, and so this, this concludes uh, part two and, and the hands-on exercise of using the calculator to get our daily calorie and macronutrient numbers. Now from here, you'll likely have additional questions like how many meals, uh, you know, and, and how many meals should I consume my target calorie goal? What kind of workouts should I do and questions like that? You can follow the link in the description to, to reach the Get Lean Foundation full course and you can enroll in that course to have a step-by-step -step process and, and program to reach your goal. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel to get updates as we release more episodes of the Get Lean Foundation. I hope you found it helpful. Please feel free to leave comments. I'll be happy uh, to, to answer and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. So thanks for watching.